Hello, welcome to another session of uh, Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel in our program, part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Uh, this is a case uh, taken from the files here at the University of Oklahoma, where I uh, spend most of my time. Um, and it's really uh, more in the uh, uh, occasional series of lumps, bumps, and ditzels than of uh, any uh, major um, uh, classification scheme or a diagnostic uh, problem. Uh, however, occasionally this uh, lesion does present a uh, challenge uh, in the differential consideration and potentially in staging. Uh, so the patient uh, has uh, an ovarian serous carcinoma. She's gotten several rounds of chemotherapy and now has come to debulking surgery, at which time she's noted to have uh, a mass uh, in the uterus that is uh, uh, getting to be a centimeter or two in size. Uh, so uh, here's the low power image of this lesion. You can see uh, we couldn't get the entire lesion into a single uh, uh, macro slide. Uh, here's the serosal surface of the myometrium. It's sort of in the middle of the myometrium, relatively uh, bluish uh, purple with a lot of open spaces, a lot of uh, clear spaces here. Uh, and as we uh, come into higher magnification, we see that, oh, uh, well, there's a little bit of fluid in here, maybe a little uh, hemorrhage in some areas. Uh, the intervening stroma is uh, slightly spindled uh, around uh, these areas. Um, and uh, many of these spaces, if not all, are lined by, uh, oh, somewhat cuboidal, uh, slightly uh, globoid uh, cells, uh, sometimes with uh, slightly clear cytoplasm relatively uh, benign, uh, bland appearing cytology. Um, and uh, then the lumen contains a mixture of uh, some inflammatory cells, eosinophilic fluid, macrophages, and so forth. No necrotic debris. Um, as we look around, we don't see too much in the way of atypia, although here there's a maybe slightly enlarged cell or two uh, as we look over this lesion. So it's a uh, gland or pseudo gland forming uh, lesion uh, with uh, some luminal uh, type of secretion uh, or luminal contents um, and intervening uh, fibrous stroma. If we go out to the periphery of this lesion, uh, we can look at the margins. Uh, it's fairly sharply circumscribed, but not encapsulated. Uh, and here we can see the uh, border with the surrounding myometrium, not particularly infiltrated. Uh, a little bit of space here. And again, we see this uh, pattern of uh, some cellularity here, maybe even a few almost uh, clear cells or vacuolated cells in the backdrop here. So uh, let's think for a minute about what could uh, be causing this. I will note here that this is a distinct morphology from uh, that of the patient's serous carcinoma. So it doesn't look to be um, related to the patient's serous carcinoma directly in the sense of being the same lesion. The pattern that I think we saw is what is uh, commonly re referred to as a sieve-like pattern, uh, which is reminiscent of this kitchen instrument with uh, a wire mesh that forms uh, um, a uh, restraining barrier allowing fluids to go through and uh, food substances to be uh, retained. Well, in tissue, uh, things that give you that uh, clear space with a mesh-like appearance are things like lipoliomyoma, which can occur in the uh, uh, myometrium, especially if you have a high fat content lesion, uh, that could give you uh, that sort of sieve-like pattern. But certainly that doesn't fit with what we were seeing uh, in terms of the uh, cuboidal uh, cells and so forth. Uh, we could think about a lyomyoma with sort of angiomatous or lymphangiomatous ectasia as a possibility, uh, in which case we'd want to see that the intervening cells had more smooth muscle characteristics rather than fibroblastic type tumors. Um, a, a rare entity might be a solitary fibrous tumor, which would be quite unusual in the uterine corpus uh, with a hemangiopericytoma-like pattern. Uh, adenomatoid tumor, uh, and uh, the uh, situation where you have a mucinous neoplasm uh, producing pseudomyxoma uteri. Uh, well, uh, as you, I'm sure, have uh, surmised, this represents an adenomatoid tumor, uh, which is nicely verified here with um, the immunohistochemical staining showing positive cytokeratin on all of these uh, 
lined spaces uh, indicating that these uh, uh, cells express cytokeratin, uh, very similar to what's on the uh, uterine serosa. Uh, now this was a pan-cytokeratin stain, uh, but uh, similar results would be seen with uh, uh, mesothelial specific stains like uh, 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 calretinin um, and uh, a number of other uh, stains as well like uh, CK5-6 and CK7. Uh, these tumors also will be WT1 positive, uh, so that uh, if that's a consideration in ovarian cancer, you cannot use that as a discriminant. Uh, so uh, it is known that this is a mesothelium-derived tumor. It has this gland-like or pseudovascular pattern. Uh, it occurs in both sexes, usually in the uh, pelvic uh, or internal genital organs, the fallopian tube, ovarian hilus, broad ligament, and uterus in women. Uh, epididymis, uh, scrotum, um, and so forth in uh, males. Um, interestingly, uh, immune suppressed states uh, may uh, result in a diffuse or larger uh, type tumors. Um, and so that may have uh, been uh, prompting in our patient who was somewhat immunosuppressed because of the uh, chemotherapy, uh, which may have prompted uh, growth. I mentioned the immunohistochemistry, positive for lots of cytokeratins, calretin-WT1, also GLUT1, uh, and these can be variably uh, hormonally uh, positive uh, to a weak degree, but usually negative for Pax8 and vascular markers, as well as uh, other markers of uh, either uh, liposarcomatous type thing or uh, adenocarcinomas. So our final sign-out diagnosis today, an incidental adenomatoid tumor, uh, occurring in the uterine corpus uh, and uh, certainly unrelated or un, uh, um, unaffecting the patient's staging or further therapy. Well, thanks so much for joining us on this uh, brief uh, case. Uh, if you like that, please uh, don't hesitate to subscribe uh, so you'll catch future releases. And uh, we always welcome your comments and suggestions about how we can uh, improve our pr uh, processes or things that you'd like to uh, see covered on future videos. Uh, we try to take those into account according to our resources and our abilities, and so we welcome them. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.